<laughs> On today's show, we have Disney news about Solo, a Star Wars story, merchandise, rumors of new monorails at Walt Disney World, and you can now purchase your Walt Disney World annual passes through the My Disney Experience app, and so much more. Welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova from DisneyByTheNumbers.com and Park Hopper John from WDWParkHoppers.com. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast at all times. And get ready for the Disney Parks Podcast. We know that coming to Walt Disney World can be very overwhelming with all the fast passes, the dining reservations, even getting from attraction to attraction can be extremely overwhelming. But we've got a friend that can help you make your next trip to Walt Disney World even more magical. It's Ramon and Theme Park Concierges. You can visit themeparkconcierges.com or call them at 407-257-9973. Ramon and his amazing team of VIP concierges will take care of you from the moment you arrive at the park until the moment you go back to your resort. They can take care of you for a four-hour time slot or a full day. It all depends on what you need. They can take care of your dining reservations, your fast passes, and even make sure that you find even more magic hidden in the Disney parks. Well, contact our friends, themeparkconcierges.com, or call 407-257-9973 and tell them your friends over at the Disney Parks Podcast sent you. And now, Disney Parks Podcast News. We might be getting new monorails here at Walt Disney World. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> We're going to retire that... Uh, 1989 89. fleet of uh, decrepit, beat up, uh, antiquated POS. things that as they the, call a, as a, the a rock monorail. would say. Finally, yeah. Um, so internal sources are reporting that Disney has ordered a new fleet of monorails uh, for Walt Disney World to replace the aging, problematic uh, Mark. Six monorails that have been used since 1989. Jeez. Apparently, the now infamous door incident uh, taking place on Monorail Red in early January was the impetus uh, behind this decision. As we like to call it, the whoopsie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes Disney needs a push in the right direction. And I think this was it. Yeah, and almost killing some people. Yeah. It's a pretty dang good push. Yeah. Yeah, it could have been a lot worse. Than, could have been yeah. horrendous. Uh, so video was taken uh, by a passenger showing one of the doors on the monorail wide open while the passengers uh, went all the way from the TTC all the way out to Epcot. Uh, so after this incident, Disney added some stickers above all the doors that were telling you not to lean on, but that's not going to solve the problem. Right. Because when the parks get stuffed, so do the monorails. Yeah, Absolutely. So the new fleet will uh, reportedly be built by Bombardier. Bombardier. Bomba. Now you're doing what I did. <laughs> Bombardier. Bombardier of Canada. Yep. Uh, the same company that built the Mark 6 trains for Walt Disney World and one of the only very few companies in the Western Hemisphere with the capability to build mass transit class monorails. The Mark 6 fleet reportedly costs $3.5 million per Per train. Million dollars. That would now be $7.5 million per train. So the question is, are they ordering 12 again? Or are they just going to order one? <laughs> and make everybody else Let's cheap suffer. out. Yeah. Let's get cheap out and just get 10. <laughs> or, or splurge a little, get 11. We'll yeah. have one just in case. Yeah, because the, the roundhouse holds uh, 10. And then they park two at the TTC. under, And then they swap. It, that's right. a rotation of what what goes in the roundhouse and what stays at uh, TTC overnight, because uh, you can't. I, from what I know, they don't let them stay out overnight more than one night. Hmm. They have to be in the roundhouse and get maintenance. Right. Uh, the line of automated uh, automated monorails that Bombardier, Bombardier, <laughs> think Cartier, <laughs> but Bombardier, Bombardier, is currently marketing is called the Innova Three Hundred series. We believe the new fleet uh, for the Disney World will resort and utilize the same chassis design, but 
certainly will be fitted with custom features to make them distinctly Disney. Uh, through the door incident uh, was thought to be the most scrutiny uh, for the aging fleet. It was not the only incident in recent uh, years that uh, pointed to the need for new monorails. In June of 2017, a large piece uh, fell off monorail blue while it was traveling uh, above the Epcot parking lot. Uh, monorail Teal suffered numerous breakdowns last summer. And don't forget the problematic automation system uh, still not working properly after years of work. And it, it announces stuff when you're not even near it. We spoke right, about that. Right. Uh, so it's, uh, and then there was the terrible crash in 2009 yeah. that you know, killed the poor the pilot. pilot. Also. Right. So, yeah, I think it's time. I think it's way over time, actually. Absolutely. And, and uh, I'm, I'm surprised that, you know, Disney kind of, you know, put their head in the sand on this one. Well, yeah. I mean, they keep they keep hiding behind the, uh, it's very expensive, blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. But I think the other the other part of the story we read was this could be part of the reason why the, uh, um, the theater in Magic Kingdom, uh, got postponed, mm. and uh, they're using that money, which you know, as as I said in the earlier show, as bad as I would love to have that theater. I, I would prefer to have new monorails. Yeah, yeah. I would really prefer them. And, and if they're talking about having some of the cool new seating features and mm-hmm. then you know, walk way through the, the different trains, oh, car to car, car, to car yeah. <laughs> I think that would be good from a safety concern as well as, you know, we can reconfigure the, the, the seats to, mm-hmm. to better accommodate uh, special needs people. And by, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, uh, uh, mobility needs people. Yeah. So, uh, so we live in a day and age when I have to go back and edit everything that I'm saying. I can't, people in wheelchairs, people in the scooters. Right. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think this is probably more needed than the. God, I hate to say this, it's more needed than the theater. Yeah. And I want the theater really bad. But yeah. We need. We I'd like the theater too. Yeah. Well, eventually, we'll get it. No idea ever dies at Disney. It just goes on the shelf. That's right. Yep. So uh, speaking of all that new Solo, a Star Wars story merchandise that I kept flubbing earlier, uh, <laughs> starting on Friday, uh, brand new merchandise for Solo, a Star Wars story started popping up in the Disney stores and on shopdisney.com and at other retail locations around the retail locations around the world. Brand names like Funko, Hasbro, Jax, Lego, Mattel, Pottery Barn, Kids, Regal Robots, Rabies, no, excuse me, Rubies, 20, no, 720, Tops, and Turvis have all created brand new film-inspired merchandise. I'll just stop and think about the licensing for those. That's a couple of bazillion That's dollars. That's a little bit of cash. They yeah. could buy some monorails. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a wide variety of figurines, collectibles, and even film production chair. I wouldn't mind having a film production chair. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is great. We knew this was coming, uh, but it's funny how they release this story. And it's like, I don't ever remember seeing a story like this yeah. before. Like, Force Awakens has new lines of collectibles from Pottery Barn Kids, Regal right. Robot. I don't remember all that stuff. But Our I- friend uh, and field reporter Vince sent us this picture. Uh, in the studios now, they got uh, solo banners up. So, you know, when you walk towards the, the launch bay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so on the, the light poles, they got the solo banners up. Nice. So, Am I the only one that every time I see anything for Solo, a Star Wars movie, I start singing Red Solo no Cup? cup. <laughs> no, I do too. Red Solo no Cup. cup. Han Solo <laughs> will shoot you up. <laughs> they should actually have that song in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> he goes into a bar. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Yeah, yeah. They should, uh, He's he should just sit down and just like grab a drink and it'd be a red yeah, solo cup. Yeah. <laughs> they should monopolize on that. Oh, that'd be awesome. All right. Uh, so as John mentioned at the top of the show, annual passes are now available for purchase directly through the My Disney Experience app. No need now to get online and purchase or go to any will call booth. Uh, on property or guest services to get your ticket. Nope. You can now do this on your app. Uh, it's only here in Walt Disney World. Annual passes traditionally were only available for purchase at ticket booths outside the theme parks and at the Ticket and Transportation Center. But to expedite the process, Walt Disney 
uh, World annual passes can now be bought directly through the My Disney Experience app. Yay, finally. Out-of-state residents can purchase either the Platinum Plus Pass or the Platinum Pass via the app. Florida residents can use the app to purchase the Platinum Plus Platinum Plus Pass. <laughs> Easier for you to say. <laughs> the Platinum Pass, the Gold Pass, the Silver Pass, and the Weekday Select Pass, or the Epcot After Four Pass. Is anybody still using an Epcot yep. After Four? Yes, they are. As their only media? Yeah, absolutely. Really? Well, stop and think about it. If if going to the Magic Kingdom really isn't that big a deal, mm. you know, and if it really is, you can go to the After Hours events, you mm. can go to the Mickey's Not So Scary or Very yeah. Merry. You could get a lot of Magic Kingdom stuff in. And really, honestly, I mean, Epcot's got all the festivals. You can see rock concert, you can see concerts, you yeah. got the arts festival, you got right. the flower festival, you got the I food guess. festival, you got the Christmas festival, yeah. you've got the No Festival, you got the Chew, you got Steve Harvey. Mm. I guess. Uh, unfortunately, this feature does not cut out visiting the ticket booths completely. Dad gum it. Uh, in order to activate that annual pass, you will need to go to a ticket booth and show your ID uh, to get it activated. I I think I may, maybe I'll test it this year. I think you can cheat. If you go uh, with that new ticket uh, to the turnstiles for the first time, and, uh, oh, that's not working. The little guest service person will come over and then ask for your ID. And I think you can then cheat having to wait in line over at guest services. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah, I think that's what I did. Then we're going to. I forgot to go. Dear Mr. Casanova, hi, I'm Steve. <laughs> I'm one of the lawyers from Walt Disney World Resort. Uh, on a recent episode, we heard uh, you telling people how to cheat the system. Now, Mr. Casanova. Wasn't well, really cheating, it's a workaround. <laughs> Do I need to stand in every line there, <laughs> including the ones at the Bill Call booth? Yes. <laughs> every line. Every line must be stood in yeah. for the appropriate time, which we deem fit. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, so Tony earlier was talking about his trip uh, recently to Voodoo Donuts, and Disney said, oh, yeah? Well, watch this. Dole Whip Donuts are now available. And I've got a picture of it. Up at right Disneyland. Right. Yeah. So it's just... <sighs> Can you see it? No, hang on. Let me go over. I, I got it. We're good. I'm looking. Wow, that looks good. I could do with one of those. Uh, can I say? Can I say a joke and not people t not take me seriously? No, I don't think so. And probably not. At Disneyland giving us the middle finger of love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a Hall of Fame for Disney Park treats, then the Dole it must have a must be a first ballot inductee. My world, it's already in there. Uh, the Disneyland donut cart which was opened in 2016, offers an over-the-top donut creations. Uh, now their latest creation is a spin on the iconic Dole Whip treat, the Dole Whip Donut. The Dole Whip Donut is filled with little chunks of pineapple and pineapple jelly and is topped with the pineapple icing and meringue. Mm. Uh, the Disneyland Donut Cart is located to the left of Sleeping Beauty Castle and only offers about three donut flavors a day, which they rotate among about 40 combinations. So this new item may not be around permanently. Jen is saying she went there twice this week and it got none. <laughs> it was so twice she didn't get... Oh, that's too yeah. bad. Uh, again, man, Disneyland seems to get all this really... Cool. We... We've got... We, it's the testing bed We did of, the donut. We yeah. did the Dole Whip. Yeah. That, wasn't that, you know, wasn't that one of our things? No. Oh, I guess not. It started no, in Disneyland. It started Disneyland. Because, dang it. That, yeah. That's a word. Yeah. Hey, the uh, digital key launched this week. Hey! Well, that came out quick. Yeah. Oh. I guess they were at the ready when they posted that article. From press release to execution <laughs> in a matter of days. Is the press release out? Yes. Fire in the hole. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Walt Disney World's new digital key room entry system appears to set the debut the week of April 15th yeah. uh, at Disney's Wilderness Lodge. Uh, when Disney recently shared details regarding its digital key program, they said that the only option would launch soon with no specific dates, and soon means now. <laughs> it's like space balls. Yeah. When will then be now? Soon. 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 <laughs> <laughs> when are you launching that? Soon. Now. Soon. No, no. When is soon? Now. now. 
uh, multiple reports on the internet uh, saying that their reservation details were updated in their My Disney Experience app uh, that included now an unlock a door feature. Unlock door. Alexa, unlock my door. <laughs> It could happen. If she unlocks the door yeah. downstairs, we're going to laugh. <laughs> no, there's other words I have to say. Oh, okay. uh, the digital key system is an alternative to Disney's Magic Band, allowing hotel guests to hold their Bluetooth-enabled smartphones near any entry point, tapping a button to unlock. The feature will supposedly work on hotel and villa doors, uh, resort entry gates, pools, fitness centers, anything that's got a door that's locked in the resort <laughs> you're staying at. <laughs> which is the Wilderness Lodge. Yeah. Uh, it is not known if Disney plans to expand this feature uh, to the theme park gates, and they have to. Uh, Fast Pass Plus Touch Point, because it gets rid of counterfeit tickets. Right. You can't, Brilliant. You can't fake an electronic ticket. You know, it's got yes. an electronic signature. Right. I'm just saying. Right. Uh, so they're hoping that this will go to the gates, the Fast Pass Plus, mm -hmm. uh, all other kind of touch points, uh, you know, paying for stuff and things like that. Right. Uh, Disney Wilderness Lodge was named as the first resort to receive this uh, enhancement treatment. Uh, no word is on how quickly they're going to roll it out. Soon. Soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think they're, they're going to go full guns. Oh, yeah. This. If, this, if, this, if they can get through this summer... At Hollywood, if they get through this summer at the Wilderness Lodge, mm. it'll probably be like, okay, fire them all up. Here's my crazy thing. Uh, there was what? Two, four, there were seven of us at Bay Lake Tower last year. Mm -hmm. um, we had seven magic bands, and none of them worked. That's true. I remember that. Now, I could have seven phones. <laughs> And this is not saying that this is going to make it work like better than Magic Bands. Are they? Uh, that's the information I want to know. Will this work more reliable than the Magic Band? Right. Is there a disconnect between the band and and the hotel system? Right. The one thing that I think that this would be really good for in that specific situation is instead of actually having to go back to the front desk, mm. you can literally call the front desk and say, "Hi, I'm standing outside my door." Can you open it? Can can you can you put my magic band on? Because yeah. my my Disney Experience app is not working. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I mean, in that case, I went downstairs. Uh, she tested. She redid them and tested them all downstairs. We tap 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 tap, and she says, "Well, I'll come up with you to make sure that they work." I said, "Yeah." Cause come on. I not going back up there. The beer's and I, getting warm. We got to go. Yeah, I got seven more bands that still don't work. I, right. You know. The beer's getting warm. Somebody's got to let me in the room eventually. Chop, yeah. chop. Yeah. So I just, I hope, I hope it's more reliable is all I'm saying. Yeah, me too. It'll be interesting. And I and I like the line that was uh, uh, fast pass plots, touch points, park yeah. passes and stuff. To, could conceivably serve as an alternative to magic bands. Right. When that phrase is uttered, in my mind, what I'm hearing is to soon replace Magic Bands because mm -hmm. I think Magic Bands are going to go the yeah, way of the dodo. I think so. It just makes it just makes sense. Now that, go ahead. That, yeah, there's got to be one park worldwide that will go completely media medialess. Sure. Yeah. There's got to be one. We thought it was going to be Shanghai, but yeah, so for much. some reason, uh, they're hanging on right uh, to regular media like we are. But somebody's <laughs> got to go completely right. meaningless, and I think our, it would be us. With our, you know, my Disney experience app seems to be consistently at least moderately okay. Yeah, I don't see why it couldn't be. We couldn't be the first one to go. And I, I know right. Jen's busting my chops a little bit about how great Disneyland is, and it is. Mm. It's, it's it phenomenal. Is. I but like it. you know, they're starting to roll out things that we've been doing for a while as far as ticket media and that kind of stuff goes. So I think we're going to be the first park that does that and we're going to pay the price for it because everybody comes to everybody comes to Disney World and most everybody has cell phones the problem is especially for our out of well I know because they've got in-house Wi-Fi yeah that'll work all right cool no no problem moving on all right you up so tony yes interested in going to a sunday brunch at maria and enzo's no <laughs> 
So, uh, and and I'll I'll read the copy here, and I'll try to keep some of my personal feelings out. We've we've had several rough experiences at Marie and Enzo's, Three. and we've made no bones about it. But as Disney fans and podcasters, we're going to bring you the story and let you have your own decision. That's right. On your own time, you may have own, a completely different experience than I did. You may. Odds are you won't, but you may. Yeah. So Maria Enzo's Ristorante, Disney Springs, has begun serving a Sunday brunch that includes classic breakfast foods with an Italian touch, plus some of their most popular entrees. Guests can, ch- guests can choose. I was like, what? Guests can choose from a price-fixed brunch menu that includes some buffet elements or select from an a la carte menu. The Familiar pri- from any place we know? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, um, Something with a P. Um, God, I can't remember the name. Plancha? Plancha, yeah. The price fix menu is $35 for adults, a little cheaper than plancha, uh, or uh, $15 for children three to nine. Uh, guests will enjoy a salumi and cheese station, an antipasti station, a pizza station, yogurt and fresh toppings. That sounds good right now. Mm. Uh, and assorted pastries, plus their choice of a select entree and a chocolate fountain for desserts. That sounds pretty Ooh. good. Uh, entree choices from the price fix menu include uh, French toast with warm berry preserves, whipped mascarpone and granola, New York strip steak and eggs served with scrambled or over easy with parm uh, roasted potatoes, farmstead vegetable frittata, uh, including fingerling potatoes, asparagus, forest mushrooms, tomato, onion, and four cheeses, poached hen egg. Where else are they getting the eggs from? Ostrich? Are they posting the, poaching the hen? Or are they poaching the egg? <laughs> or ostriches? I don't know. <sighs> I get it. Adver- you know, advertising. Marketers are in everything. Poached hen egg and quinoa kale salad with zucchini, pepper, asparagus, green beans, tomatoes, toasted almonds, avocado, uh, frise, and a citrus vinaigrette. Spaghetti a la carbonara with, uh, I even did the hand motion, with <laughs> Parmesan <laughs> cheese sauce, poached hen eggs, and... <laughs> It's a good thing we're not doing poached, you know, yeah. snake eggs right. and prosciutto de parma. Guests can also add an endless bellini or mimosa for 15 bucks. That's not bad. Not really. Appetizers on the a la carte menu include uh, arancini, calamari, and Sicilian vegetables and bean soup. Do not get the arancini. It's not worth it. Yeah. It's like smaller than golf balls. It's not worth it. Right. I'm sorry. Come at me, bro. Yeah. Come at me, Enzo's and Maria. Uh, several salads are offered as well, including a Caesar burrata. Am I saying that right? Mm-hmm. And a uh, fennel orange. That sounds really good. Uh, then an a la carte entree includes uh, bousiate. Bousiat. Yeah, I think that's correct. With spiral shaped pasta, lump crab, cherry tomatoes, and parsley. These are directly off the menu. Yeah. Uh, spaghetti and meatballs, uh, meze rigatoni right. a la norma. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure of that one. Uh, no, I'll try it. Lasagna. Al forno with Sicilian layered baked <laughs> pasta. It's basically lasagna. Yeah. Swordfish, uh, salmon, uh, mm-hmm. chicken parm, and a steak. Uh, Pizzoli. Pizzoli. No, with a New York strip steak, tomato, oregano, capers, and the fixings. Uh, Sunday brunch is served beginning at 11 a.m., and reservation, reservations are definitely suggested. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. good. It, it sounds interesting. Yeah. My question is, my, the thing I find is funny is, like, several fan favorite items. You've only been open for a month and a half. Yeah, right. <laughs> <You've>, and this <laughs> fan does not have a favorite. I don't have a favorite in this place. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I man. have a favorite restaurant I stay away from when I'm there now. Yours. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. I don't I, I Listen, give it a shot. Tell us what you think. You know, write us emails, phone us, whatever you have to do. Uh, I'd be interested because, like I said, I've been, I was there, I've been there three times and did not have a terrific experience of any of the three times. Now, other people said that they had a good time, the food was good, blah, 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 blah. I don't think the service is bad. The food has been bad. And that's typically why I'm going to a restaurant. Right. Not for good service. Right. For the food. But for good food. So. Yeah. If I wanted to go somewhere just for the service, I'd go to my mom's house. Yeah. Or McDonald's. If I wanted to go somewhere for good service, <laughs> I would go to my mom's house. Right. <laughs> right. Or here. 
<laughs> you have great service. Right. The food's really good, too. I'm just yep. saying. Yep. Are we ready? Yep, let's do it. <laughs> Headline news. <laughs> All right, so minivans. Uh, that's not the right. No, word. that was last week. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that's not that the right. That was from last week, too. Where, where is this week's? Um, mm, I don't know. Hold on. I think uh, starting with Redbox, Redbox oh. men's complaint. Yeah. Uh, so Redbox uh, amended their complaint accusing Disney of unfair business practice. <laughs> what I read was, this is a great one. Disney has hired a company that, uh, because Redbox goes to retail stores like Walmart to buy the movies for the Redbox machines because Disney won't distribute to them. Those movies aren't for resale. They're not reselling them. They're renting them. Holy Hold on. Oh, my God. That's what's throwing the whole suit, amongst sure. other things. Right. Now, Disney has hired a company that tracks down these Redbox buyers and intervenes with the stores and goes, I guess, with some letter and says, you can't sell that person the videos because they don't have the right to uh, do that. Now, Redbox is saying that, yes, they can. It's, you know, freedom of, you know, whatever. You know, I can purchase whatever the hell I want and do whatever I want with it. Yada, yada, yada. <coughs> wow. So this is going to be a, a drag out uh, fight. That's they're, interesting. They're, they're going to the mattresses on this one. They're going to be. Yeah. Disney's going to be owning Redbox soon. Could be. Going to be Red Hat. Yeah. <laughs> Red Hat boxes. Yeah. Mickey's hat. Mickey box. That's right. You know, hey, just be another little check mark in their coffer of things. Yep, one yep. more revenue stream. Yep. Uh, hey, there's a new animated series uh, coming to Disney Junior in 2019. I forgot the title of it off the top of my head. You're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> yeah, sorry. There's several. <laughs> uh, speaking, of, well, I'll talk about Smalls later. Yeah. Uh, Disney cast member was arrested after stealing eighteen thousand dollars from the Coke store at Disney Springs. Wow. Nice. Nice. 18000 Wow. Uh, land preparation permits filed for Disney's 50-megawatt solar farm. So that's happening. That's over, I think, by Grand Floridian Way in the golf course. Right. Was it the Owl House? The Owl House? Is that the new Disney animated yeah, series? Been. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. Uh, removal of the conveyor structure used to shift dirt uh, and soil to the Hollywood Studios is being removed. Oh, they're not using that as a new attraction? <laughs> hey, let's get on the dirt conveyor. No, man, it could be the trash compactor ride. Yeah. Not your little yeah. short to be a stone trooper. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so they built that whole contraption just to move dirt from one side of the road to the other. Without I know, I drive under it all yeah, the time. Yeah. It's freaky. Yeah, so. I've never seen it moving, though. <laughs> no, and I tell you what, I, I they probably don't do it on purpose because all the rocks would be falling off. Probably, but I would love to ride that. Just, yeah. just <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure guys are yeah. trouble to do that. Uh, new uh, Star Wars solo magic bands featuring uh, Hans and Lando have made their way out there. Hans and Lando. <laughs> Hans, it comes one Han. Yeah, <laughs> Han. Well, they had Hans, Hans and Lando. Hans and Franz are going to pump you up. You up. Uh, <laughs> That's great. Uh, and then the minivan service uh, is now at Art of Animation. So uh, for those of you who don't know, I live on the other side of Animal Kingdom, and I drive on the main thoroughfare. There's, there's two main roads from the Disney area that goes to the airport. There's 528. Mm -hmm. And then there's 417. Mm -hmm. I hop on 417 to drive to Tony's house to record. Mm. As I'm driving, I'm passed by two minivans. Oh, really? Going to the airport. Wow. Empty. Maybe they're going for they're a pickup. They're going to pick up. Yeah. yeah, I know. But it was just funny. I was yeah. like, you guys are supposed to go pro. Oh, yeah, you guys are going yeah. to the airport. Yeah. So I was shocked. It's like, that was jarring. I, you would think that they would stage one or two uh you know, depends on how busy they are. I'm, yeah, I'm sure guess. those guys are going to go stage. I'm, I'm I've got this. Well, I've seen now uh, 74 <sighs> on the the minivan, so they're up to 74. Yeah, I think they, I think they're actually technically up to 80. I passed 59 and 60. 
63. Mm. I think 63, 64. Yeah, yeah I always try. I try to take notice <laughs> with the numbers. Just stupid. I, I just ride up on the guy, yeah. give him the dirty look. What's your number? <laughs> <laughs> hashtag what's your number hashtag hashtag rock and roll hey uh we have a a a, a fan of the show a friend of the show uh vince that does some field reporting for us uh typically every day he sends us yep uh some kind of email with breaking as he calls it breaking news uh from the field but uh i thought i'd share this with you this is vince at the new purple wall at uh the magic kingdom so uh, I don't get. I'm sorry. I guess I'm just not a good Disney fan. Well, they got a mix of the millennial pink with a little I, blue, and I don't get the, the, the vitriol over the this. Fuchsia. I just don't get the vitriol over yeah. this. Well, the whole there's a whole other geometric design part. They left some of the wall. They left some of the wall purple. Then they did this, and then they have this geometric part. Right. Um, so Vince, if you're listening, take some pictures of. I think I've actually I do have uh, pictures of the geometric. That wow. I can uh, pop up here, I think. I bumped into Vince. I guess it was the last meetup, and I almost didn't recognize because he didn't have his collar on, collar up. Oh, no collar shirt. And he didn't have a collar going. So uh, no. I didn't recognize him. No, I moved him. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. So, thanks, Vince. Always great, man. I, I don't thank him enough because he's constantly feeding us info, and that, yeah. that's super, super duper helpful. And, yeah. um, you know, like I said before, Jen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jen's got a new article over the Disney Parks podcast blog, and uh, it's great. So now we have uh, a new person helping us with uh, with some blog articles occasionally, and that's great. One down, mm-hmm. a couple more to go. Yeah. Uh, so we thank you guys. Thanks for being amazing fans. Thanks to our Patreons. And uh, make sure that you find us over at the DisneyParksPodcast.com site. You can find all of our show archives, uh, some blog articles, links to amazing sponsors. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all at uh, Disney Parks Podcast. You can find us on Twitter, which we're trying to we're trying to incorporate that a little bit more. Yeah, uh, maybe we're not the best tweeters, but uh, you can find us over at Disney Podcaster. Anything else you want to add, buddy? I got nothing. All right, my friends. With that, we will see you next time, and we'll see ya in, in the, the parks. parks. The Disney Parks Podcast is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company. All Disney parks, attractions, lands, shows, event names, etc. are registered trademarks of the Walt Disney Company. Like a boat out of the blue Fate steps in and sees you through